question, just to go back to that point, in your readout, when you say the President made clear that the U.S. That U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action. Could you decode that for us? What exactly is the warning that's being issued here? Hello, everybody. So, a uh, massively breaking news coming from the White House. So, just now, as I speak, you know, the press secretary of White House, John Kirby, the famous character, he's holding a press conference and he has told us that. Joe Biden today spoke to um, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and given him a warning and real warning according to him saying that from now onwards US policy on Gaza is gonna be um, depended on America's assessment of Israeli action as to how Israeli acts in the wake of the brutal killings of seven uh, foreign workers and how they are cha implementing those changes, the changes that have been suggested by America. So that is what America is going to do. According to him, it's a stark warning and Israel has got the warning not just, not for weeks or months, for in his words, for days and hours. That's how little time Israel, according to Kirby, has to impress upon America or convince America for America to continue to, um, you know, supply its aid and whatnot, you know, to Israel. That's number one. John, just to go back to that point, in your readout, when you say the president made clear that the U.S. that U.S. policy with respect to Gaza will be determined by our assessment of Israel's immediate action, could you decode that for us? What exactly is the warning that's being issued here? I think it's very clear in the language itself, uh, Nancy. Um, we're going to the we're looking for concrete steps to alleviate humanitarian suffering in Gaza. Again, I won't get ahead of what the Israelis will or won't say or announce. We're looking for concrete steps to be announced here soon. Um, and it's not just about the announcement of concrete steps and changes in their policies, but it's the execution of those announcements and those decisions and implementing them. Uh, and so we're, we obviously will will watch closely and monitor uh, how how they do on, on the commitments that they make. And as um, as I said earlier, if there's no changes to their policy and their approaches, then there's going to have to be changes to ours. I think I think what the world wants to understand is is the White House warning that it may remove military aid. What exactly is the threat here? I think I've. I've uh, stated it pretty clearly, uh, and I'm not going to. I'm not going to, as I said earlier, I'm not going to preview steps. I'm not going to preview decisions that haven't been made yet. But um, there are things that need to be done. There are too many civilians being killed. The risk to aid workers is unacceptable. Uh, now we have certain aid organizations that are reconsidering whether they're even going to be able to continue operations in Gaza while famine looms. So there has to be tangible steps. Let's see what they announce. Let's see what they direct. Let's see what they do. Uh, but I'm not going to get ahead of that. Good, Mary. So, I, I'm going to try this one more time because the president. I reckon seems, you would. <laughs> <laughs> that's what we do. Yeah. The president seems to have said to, to the prime minister today, you know, make these concrete changes or else. It's the or else that I want to make clear here. Is the president threatening to withhold aid to Israel if they do not make these changes? The president made it clear that our policies with respect to Gaza uh, will be dependent upon our assessment of how well the Israelis uh, make changes and implement changes uh, to, to make the situation in Gaza better for the Palestinian people. And how much time are you giving them to make these changes, to implement these concrete steps? Again, we, we would hope to see some announcements of changes here in coming hours and days, and I'll leave it at that. That's short. Hours and days. There's a question mark here. If Joe Biden is saying now that from now onwards, America's policy on Gaza is going to be decided by America's assessment of Israeli action. Then what was America doing up until now? This is exactly what we have been saying. So up until now, clearly, you were blindly trusting Israel. A country which is in the dock for war crimes, for genocide. And America, the so-called superpower, the so-called champion of uh, civilized world. 
Aren't you making an, a spectacular confession here that up until now you have been blindly trusting Israel? So therefore you are equally responsible for the genocide of 35,000 people including 17,000 kids, children, toddler, babies. Because the word is from now onwards America's policy on Gaza is going to be decided by our assessment i.e. America's assessment of Israeli's action. That's a big confession. I don't know if they, they even realize what they have just said. That's a big confession. And I think whenever you know this, this matter goes to the Hague or International Criminal Court, I think this the lawyers should refer to this statement. This is the official position of America. The today is 4th of April. From 4th of April onwards, America's policy on Gaza is going to be based on America's own assessment of Israeli action. That means for the last six months, America has been blindly, you know, giving a free hand to Israel to carry out whatever it can. And that has resulted in the killing of 35,000 innocent unarmed civilians in Gaza. That's number one point. He's also saying, that if Israel doesn't change, then the change will come from us. Stark warning, right? If you don't change, we will change. He was continuously pressed, as you can see from the, uh, you, 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 you can watch in the video yourself, that he was continuously pressed by reporters. That does it mean that America will withhold all the military aid and other support to Israel? He did not specify. So that's number one. Number one point is that is it a stark confession by America that it has been complicit in the Israeli genocide of Palestinians in Gaza in the last six months. That's number one point. That is going beyond the headline. So we don't look at the headlines only. We go beyond the headlines. That's number one. I'm not saying that. I'm just asking. I'm raising a very pertinent question. In this answer, he says famine looms. I mean, I don't know, what is he smoking, John Kirby? This is what you've been saying for last three weeks, famine looms. Hang on a minute, which world are you living in? Famine has gripped. People are dying. Starvation, people are dying of starvation. For you, famine looms. Just because they are Palestinians, they are not, they don't have, they are not whites, they are not Europeans, Americans, their lives have no value. Famine looms. Scores of people are dying, are not just dying of starvation, dying of different diseases and there is no hospital. There are no doctors to treat them. So please correct yourself. Famine doesn't loom. Famine has gripped and people are dying of starvation. That's number one. Number two, there is a, there is a, there is a contradiction. And I will assess this in later because news has just broken. So I just wanted to kind of bring it to you. He was asked whether, uh, you know, he was asked about the uh, asked about the uh, the recent approval of military aid to Israel, which includes, by the way, two thousand pound bombs. Two thousand pound bombs. John Kirby actually defends that. We saw in the past President uh, Biden pushing Netanyahu to protect civilians, but how much words really matter here when, on actions, the same day of the attack on the humanitarian words, the U.S. was approving more bombs to Israel. <coughs> Do you, we are now six months into the war. How much the U.S. actions are actually encouraging Israel to not do enough to protect civilians? Yeah, look, I, I'm, I'm kind of glad the question came up uh, because I, I would tell you when I've seen press reporting, you know, about the uh, about the uh, the arms sales and that kind of thing, and I, I would just remind you that that uh, it, with the exception of the immediate two months after the attack. We haven't really sent emergency aid and ass uh, military assistance to, to Israel. That was in the first couple of months. But what you're seeing here uh, is the result of a, a process of foreign military sales to Israel that takes years. Uh, and a lot of this material that's been reported publicly was notified to Congress many, many months, if not years ago, and are in the train to get to Israel. I think it's important to remember, as I tried to mentioned in the last answer that Israel still has 
a, a lot of threats it faces. I mean, we're all focused on Hamas, and I understand that, but uh, they still face active threats throughout the region, including from Iran. Uh, and the United States still has an ironclad commitment to help uh, Israel with its self-defense. And so a lot of these articles, including the 2,000-pound bombs and the F-35s, so that's, those are things that have been long in the train. So on one hand, you say you want us to believe that Joe Biden has given warning to Netanyahu that, you know, do this or else. And that or else can also mean withholding the military aid. In the same press conference, you are saying that you are justifying America's supply of lethal weapons um, for, the, for the country to use against uh, uh, the Palestinian population. This is double standard. So either you are serious about the warning to Israel or you are not. And if you are serious, then there is also an element of confession. These are the valid questions, right? It's, it, it, it should come to anybody's mind. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.